Introducing Jupiter, a large group base for 12 to 16 players, with open court, wide gap, bunkers, and a mini china wall. First, access the compound through one of three entrances. This base has six disconnectable TCs, each holding the same amount of upkeep. You can disconnect and reconnect, like so. There are also six defendable gatehouses, just like this, built into the mini china wall, with respawns and peaks upstairs. The china wall is designed to house up to 24 turrets, with plenty of breach peaks all around. You can also put a battery in here, so you can get the turrets working ASAP. You'll find another respawn in each of these six lookout towers, the great visibility of the compound. The wall wraps around the entire base, with space for 12 furnaces and great mobility around the compound. Enter the base through one of six entrances. In here, there are 12 breach peaks situated around the shell with a turret above each entrance for protection. Enter the starter call through the airlock. In here, we have everything you need to get going. And behind this door, we have the main TC, which can fit around 18 hours of upkeep. Jumping up the chute, we have peaks looking back into both floors and the airlock. As you can see from my design, the starter is built for defense and mobility, rather than storage, so feel free to modify it to suit your team. The third floor is laid out in the same way as the previous two, but with two exits onto the inner peaks. In three of the chutes, we have some extra battery compartments to make it easier to wire up the turrets. And through this door, brings us to the bedrooms and the early game shooting floor. Perfect for defending your base during the build process. There are six of these, with 12 separate bedrooms on this level. These chutes have windows looking back into the peak downs and in the shell. You can enter the open core through these, or by using the defendable jump up in the center of the base. Here, we have peaks to defend your open core, with loot behind the windows. This is my biggest open core design so far, with space for around 100 large boxes, and three walls between each room and the outside. There are also turrets in the ceiling to help protect your loot, with ramp peak downs on the next floor up. In the centre, we have eight vending machines with a level three workbench. Here are one of the three side chutes leading up to the open core, defendable with bedrooms and storage in the walls. Jumping up to the next level, we have even more boxes and beds. To open the bunkers, place a triangle roof through the floor here. You can store boxes and batteries in these. Just destroy the roof to reseal them. There are two more on the other sides of the base. There are also 12 separate bedrooms located around the ramp peak downs that look back into the open core. With space for more in the center of the base if required. Running out past the chutes brings us into the wide gap shooting floor with plenty of places to sit and camp wannabe raiders. There are also six towers like this that have breach peaks at the bottom, with single door peaks to protect you from getting shot in the foot, and a turret underneath 
to stop anyone from laddering up the side of your base. Jump up again, where we have pickups looking back onto the roof. Up here, there are some great roof defenses all around, so you can control the surrounding area. Running back into the chutes, you can use the window to defend the roof, or if you need to access the floors below. Between the chutes, there are three bedrooms just like this. You can just about squeeze four beds in each one if you need to. And in the center, we have just enough space for a scrappy. Oh, and here's the bill cost and upkeep. Yes, it's bloody expensive. What did you expect? When building the starter, I recommend securing the area with a TC first. As the base is so big, make sure you have enough space around you to expand. I recommend building it next to the shore, in the desert or in the snow where you'll find plenty of flat terrain. And I really hope you're not building it for the first time on a real server. Please practice it in a build server. You can even load the build yourself to take a closer look on Builder's Sanctuary or Rusticated. Check the description for the codes. In this tutorial, everything will be built in its final grade, except for XQM, which you can work out for yourself. The build will also be a lot smoother if you have some basic blueprints at the garage door and windows. The first two floors are very simple to put up, so just watch the video or redesign it to suit your team. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm making sure every triangle attaches to the right part to prevent the triangle splash bug. More information in the description. Now we're going to lay out the footprint and build the external TCs. Attach squares to these parts of the base all around and then triangles in between them. 
base is wall stacked or multi TC on six sides of the base. To achieve this, you need to build up by seven squares and a triangle. Remove all the squares and then build back to the base with a pattern of half moons, like so. Upgrade the last three triangles and then remove the build up. You'll need to repeat this step five more times around the base. These triangles aren't connected to the main TC, so we need to build the externals now. To do this, build up by five squares, raising the last one for the gatehouse. Now we can put down the external TC. If you want to build the shell as quickly as possible, as long as the external TC is relatively secure, you can come back and finish the housings later. Now, we can connect the wall stacked foundations to the external TC. To do this, build the entrances on all six sides. Now build a triangle floor at half height, so we can attach a frame to it on the other side. Now do the same on this side and build the wide gap foundations. You must place these frames before connecting the external to the shell. It's very important to leave this frame twig. It's only there so we can attach the frame to the other side. You must remove it before making the connection as it changes the stability of the frames. You can add it again after the connection is complete. Now we're going to build the basic footprint for the china wall. We do this now as it helps us to place the compound walls correctly and it also extends privilege to the edges of the compound so people can't build in. Build a window frame and a wall here to connect the foundations together. Mirror the footprint on this side. Again, you'll need to repeat this on all six sides. In the corner, there's a timestamp for when I start building the china wall. Feel free to start at any time you'd like, but I recommend at least finishing the open core first, so the base is fairly strong. Now we can build the towers for the windmills and connect them to the china wall with a frame. The compound wall placement will be different depending on the terrain that you're building on. If you're on a relatively flat surface, you should be able to seal it with five walls on each side. To place barricades on top of the TCs, use twig to temporarily support them. Now the compound is secure, we can start building the shell. First we'll build the breech peaks. Again, they're the same on all six sides, so just follow the video.
It's very important to place this floor before building the breech peak roofs. Now place wall frames on either side of every square. Now we can complete the chutes. The first stage of each one is the same on all six sides, but they change on the second floor, which I'll show you. With three of the shoots completed and the inner peaks placed, we can now finish the other three. It's extremely important to put a low wall here for the bunker to work. Put siren lights in the gaps between all the inner peaks so no one can climb up or drop down. To make the unfinished base more defendable, complete the third floor and the entrance to the open core.
Now to build the bedrooms. Place frames here so you can access the early game shooting floor. These frames must be rotated to cover the gap. Again, the bedrooms are the same on all six sides of the base, so you'll need to repeat this step five more times. Now we can seal in the roof and place some extra frames for stability. For the early game shooting floor, extend the wide gap footprint and build the frames up by two floors. Now the base is fairly defendable, we can start to build the open core. You can put boxes underneath the roof if you'd like. Now we'll build two layers of walls all around the base. Now extend the chutes on three sides of the base. These loot rooms also double up as extra honeycomb. The ramps aren't really necessary, they just make it easier to access the boxes. This part is extremely important for the bunker to work. Make sure the window attaches to the triangle in front of the frame, as you can see. After all three shoots are complete, build a layer of half walls all around the center. Next, build the honeycomb that goes around the back of all the loot rooms. These walls must be backwards to cover the gap in the shell. You won't be able to access these walls later, so make sure you build them in their final tier now. Now the honeycomb is built, we can build the loot rooms. Now build the frames in the center and the roof. After that, complete the chutes.
you may have some trouble placing this frame. Just try from different angles. If you don't like this little peak, you can replace it with a half wall or a full wall. Now seal in the roof all around the base. For the peak downs, make sure you place the frame before the ramp. If any of this is confusing because I'm using symmetry, I'm sorry about that, but the video would be about two hours long without it. Just remember, you can check out the base in its final form on the build servers in the description. Now the open core is sealed, place doors on three sides of the base, not where the bunkers are though. Then build a layer of walls all around. Now we can build the bunkers. There are three in total, so just repeat this step again on two more sides. It's up to you if you want to upgrade the bunkers to HQM or the walls in the open core to HQM. This frame must be rotated to cover the gap. To seal the small gap in the top of the bunker, first we must open the bunker, stand on the top, and attach a triangle here to cover it. If you're having problems placing it, you may need to try from another angle. If you don't place it right, then the bunker could seal forever. Next we'll build the bedrooms. Again, they're the same on all six sides, so just repeat this step. Around the centre, place windows and doors all around. You may need to make some changes on this part if you need more bed space for your team. Partition this area off and make it more difficult to access the bunkers. Place a wall to the left and then doors all around. Next, extend the chutes up to the roof.
Where the bunkers are, make sure these roofs are attached to the right pieces. We can cover this gap later when we build the bedrooms. Put a window at the back of the chute so you can fit two vending machines behind it. Cover it with an embrasure for now. For the china wall, we build the gatehouses first, with the bedrooms on top. Next we'll build the breach peaks, which are symmetrical on both sides. Make sure the floor the turret sits on is metal so it can't be speared out. Repeat the breach peak again on this side. Now in the center, build the lookout towers with the battery in the middle. place barricades on top of the china wall, we need to use ladders and twig scaffolding. Now we can start building the wide gap shooting floor. Extend the frames all around by two floors. Not all of them need to be metal, only the ones closest to the base. Use twig scaffolding here to make it easier to place another two rows of frames.
and do the same again on this floor. Now we can start building the towers. Place the doors now, as it will be tricky to do later. When the towers are complete, attach floors to the wide gap and the base. Then seal in the shooting floor with window frames, wall frames and ceilings. Three of these squares will be entrances or exits. The other three can be bedrooms, as behind them we have the bunkers. Now we can finish the roof. First, place three triangle roofs on top of the chutes to protect the turrets. Then add the finishing touches to the towers. Build frames here next to each chute. You could put SAM sites or extend them even higher to put windmills on. It's up to you. In the three empty gaps next to the chutes, we could build the bedroom compartments. Again, we'll use a window to place two vending machines in front of it. This frame must be metal, with the garage door facing backwards to fit four beds in here.
Squeezing four beds in here can be quite tricky, so make sure you place them in this order. And the base is finally done. If you made it this far, congratulations. Let me know how your wipe went in the comments. And subscribe if you haven't already. Also, remember to follow me on Twitch if you feel like helping me come up with new designs. All the best. Cheers.